She's breaking out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shock of seeing me jaunt must have kicked it off. Still, at least we're here to help her. Well, it's all right, Elizabeth. You'll be coming on of us. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Let me out of here. Jaunted. That's just what we didn't want to happen. Well, at least she shows she's one of us. Yeah, perhaps was one of us. She's jaunted indiscriminately and out of control without knowing how she does it or where she's going. We've got to find her. Where do we start looking? On Earth? In space? She could be anywhere. We don't even know if she's alive or dead. To jaunt any substantial distance, all the tomorrow people require a boost. That is why you wear jaunting belts. She did not have one, so the likelihood is that she did not jaunt far, certainly not into the sea or outer space. Perhaps she did not jaunt anywhere. Perhaps she only accomplished half a jaunt. You mean she's stuck in hyperspace? We haven't got much time. You know what happens to somebody in hyperspace. Without an AE suit on, they'd very soon start to drift apart. Flight <laughs> sure, detectors working okay, Tim? Of course. They are maintained and fully charged. Good. Any idea where she might be in hyperspace, Tim? The only logical place to search are at the hyperspatial coordinates which correspond to the norm spatial coordinates of the classroom from which she disappeared. I propose to jaunt you into different sectors near to those coordinates. It is pointless you both searching the same sector. Yeah, well, that's true. OK, Tim. Let's go. Check. 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 Any luck in your sector, John? No, uh, nothing so far, Stephen. Me neither. Hey, just a minute. I'm getting a positive reaction from the life force detector. Perhaps it's her. Well, hang on a second. I'll join into your sector. OK, Tim? OK, John. It looks like Stephen might have found her. Over in that direction. Hang on a minute, Stephen. Let's take our helmets off. We can survive in hyperspace a few minutes without them. We don't want to frighten Elizabeth when she sees us. She's in a bad way. Elizabeth? No, no, leave me alone! She's gone. Where? Almost certainly back to the spot from which she originally disappeared. The school classroom? With us. It's a dream. It's a terrible dream. It's all over. Please believe us. It's dark outside. It's late. What are you doing here? Why are you dressed like that? Oh, there are a lot of things to tell you. Come along with us. We'll explain everything to you. John, the picture looking stormy. Oh, never mind that now, Steve. Do you think that taxi driver believed your story about us advertising man the moon milk bars? Well, it makes no difference. I don't want to believe him anyway. So this is it then? The bat cave? This is the lab where we operate from and, well, keep all our equipment. Well, just the two of you? Well, except for Tim. 
Who's he, the cat? <laughs> well, I have been taken for some things in my time, but never a cat. What's that? Who's there? That was Tim. But where is he? Oh, he's all around us. Tim's our uh, computer. Well, artificial intelligence, really. I must say, I like that title. Hello, Elizabeth. I'm glad you have joined us. Uh, hello, Tim. Where are spools and things? I don't have spools, Elizabeth. I am a biotronic computer. I consist of living fluids, and I am capable of original thought, so I don't have to be programmed. Good. I'm glad you're not mechanical. I'm not very good with mechanical things. Pleased to meet you, Tim. Perhaps you'll be able to help me correct homework sometime. Not if it is anything like the homework Stephen brings me to do for him, but I'll try. So, two little tomorrow people, and then there were three. Five? There are others. Yes, Carol and Kenny. No, they don't live on Earth anymore. They've gone to join the Galactic Federation. Well, actually, they've jo joined Overmind, which is a link of telepathic beings which advises the uh, Galactic Council. Sounds a bit like giving your body for scientific research. Well, really, it's more like being a member of Parliament or representing a country at the United Nations. It's good to know that someone's looking after our interests out there. Are they gone forever, or can I expect to see them sometime? Well, I don't expect we'll be seeing much of Carol. She's fallen in love with an Adonisian counsellor. <laughs> but Kenny said he'd pop back from time to time, even though they've sent a spaceship to collect his mother to go and live with him on the Galactic Trig. <sighs> so, tell me, what else is new? What else do I have to know? <laughs> Gently, Stephen. Elizabeth. Oh, thanks. Now pinch me and tell me which was a dream and which was real. This is real. The Tomorrow People and you being one of us. And last night wasn't a dream? No. Nope. I bet I look a sight. You look great. Beautiful. What a way to talk to your teacher. Teacher, heck, what time is it? I'll be late. I'm supposed to be taking the register of your class this morning. Oh, it's about four minutes to nine. How far are we from the school? We seem to be hours in the taxi. You won't be late, neither will I. I never leave till this time. Here, put this on. That's it. What do I do? Oh, nothing. Just come and stand over here. See, it's easy, no trouble at all. No trouble, eh? Listen to that lot, sounds like a cage full of wild animals. Beats the buses in the underground any day. Oh, yes. I don't think I'm going to face the bus ride after today. Oh, tough day. Murder, sheer murder all day. It's the same in every classroom. Wild. I want to be a teacher because I believe in the young. But that belief took some pounding today, I can tell you. And the picture stayed stormy all day. I kept a check on it. Well, I just had a feeling, well, if it would change to summer again, everything would be all right and everyone would calm down. That's interesting. Let's go and have a look at it. Now? Well, why not? Spend all day here. I could do without trailing back at night. So quiet now and peaceful without the kids. 
Hey, look at the picture. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just looking at the back. I thought there might be two pictures. We're not that stupid. Yeah, so I see. The trouble is, we need to make a detailed microscopic examination of it. And we can't do that here. Yeah, let's get it back to the lab. I'd like Tim to have a look at this. No, leave it where it is. Well, don't worry. You can just say you've entered it for a competition or something. Well, that doesn't matter. It's just that I'm afraid. What of? It's just a picture. Well, that's it. The one thing we do know is that it isn't just a picture. Well, the only way we can find out what it really is is by taking it back to the lab. Well, perhaps somebody wants us to take it back. Whatever for? Well, like the Trojan horse. Remember what happened after it was dragged inside the city gates? You've got a point there. Yeah, well, perhaps discretion is the better part of valour for the moment. We'll leave it here until we know a bit more about it. May I ask you a question, Elizabeth? Anything, Tim. Are you going to keep your job? Qualify to be a teacher, I mean? Yes, and then carry on teaching, I hope. I am glad. John doesn't have a job. He doesn't really need one, does he? I suppose not. But it does keep him out of touch with ordinary people. Well, I intend to stay very much in touch. Besides, if we're going to discover more tomorrow people, what better place to look than a school? And what better way to look than being a teacher? I am glad you are not choosing the easy option, Elizabeth. Thank you, Tim. But I wouldn't mind it being a bit easier. I hope the picture stays fine tomorrow. Good night, Tim. Good night, Elizabeth. Please, miss. I've been making these badges. Can I pass them round? For people to keep? <laughs> yes, of course. That's very generous of you, Robert. May I have one? Sure. Which colour? Uh, blue. Thank you, Robert. They're lovely. Which colour? Blue or green? Oh, I don't know. What have you got most of? No, you choose. It's important that you choose. All right, then. I'll have a green one. Which colour? Blue or green? I have green one, thanks. Top. Smart. John, Ginger's young brother Chris is outside. He wants to come into the lab. I think he's in trouble. Oh, let him in then, please, Tim. No, Chris, don't see much. What on earth's happened to you? You shall see Ginger. She's a sight worse off than me, I can tell you. Well, what's happened? Have you two had an accident or something? A fight? No, no, beat him. I beat him fair and square. Even though if he is bigger than me. You've been fighting with Ginge, whatever for. Because he's a lousy blue. Huh. Who would have thought him, my own brother? After all these years, he turns out to be a lousy, stinking blue. Are you trying to tell me that Ginge has joined the Conservative Party? Ha ha. Politics has nothing to do with him. Well, what then, football? Of course not. Him being a blue and me being a green. See the green badge I'm wearing? And Ginge wears a blue one of these? That's right. And I thought I knew him just goes to show you, doesn't it? Do you mean to say that you and Ginge have been fighting over the colour of a badge? Yeah, well, of course. You're not a blue too, are you? I still don't know what a blue or green is, or what the difference is supposed to why be. Why everything? If you're a green, you've got to find a blues and jack. I still don't see why. Because they're blues, of course. Honestly. Ginger was always on about how bright you tomorrow people are. Myself, I'm beginning to wonder. Chris, are you seriously trying to tell me that you and Ginger have fallen out over a colour? Not just a colour. Blue and green, don't you know? Explain it to me. There are these two colours, you see, and you've got to choose which you're going to be. Everyone is either a green or a blue, and you wear a badge to show which side you're on. Well, how come you and Ginger are on opposite sides, then? Because he chose to be a blue, that's why. Where's Ginge now? Uh, he's in hospital. 
Oh, no, Chris, you did No, 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 he, he fell off his motorbike. No, Chris, you hold the fort here. I'm going to go and visit Ginge. The old bunch of grapes, as he would say. But he's a blue! He's still a human being, and your brother. Chris, take off that badge. Forget all this blue and green nonsense. Seems like a mass outbreak of madness to me. It's all right, Seth. You'll be all right. Are you going to be in trouble over what happened today? No, the headmaster says I'm not to blame. Because as a student teacher, I shouldn't have been left in charge of the class anyway. Oh, good. Coming back to the lab for supper? No, I'll join you later. I'm going round to Seth Bartlett's home, see how he is. Why, is that part of your job? Not really, but if I'm going to be a teacher, caring about the kids is all part of the job. You're going to be one of the best, Elizabeth. I'll see you later. OK. I want to see and, if possible, video record that picture as it changes. How do you think we should do that? Stake it out until it does change. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Come on, give me a hand and get the gear ready. It ought to be a boarding school the time I spend there. Where's Elizabeth, by the way? Oh, she's gone to see that kid who was hurt today. Thank you for the tea, Mrs. Bartlett. I'm glad Seth isn't badly hurt. I look forward to seeing him in a couple of days. Attachment in case there are any sonics. Thank you. Uh, look after Elizabeth when she gets in, please, Tim. It will be a pleasure, John. Watch it, Tim. Don't get your tubes in a tangle. Seems to be sunny and bright at night. Yeah, well, let's get the equipment set up, then we can sit down and wait. Thank <laughs> you. 